Gemstones can be very valuable, and that's because of how rare they can be. The ones we're going to show you in this video are the rarest of the rare, the best of the best, and that makes them the most valuable as well. These are the rarest gemstones ever found. Number 20. Natural Pearl Pearls are hard objects produced within the soft tissue of mollusks found in freshwater ponds and rivers. The pearl consists of calcium carbonate and it can have a value akin to gemstones for their beauty. The perfect pearl is round and smooth, but other shapes have also been found. As we've managed to make fake pearls and actually encourage mollusks to make them, the rarity and beauty of pearls have become somewhat lost in recent years. However, there's no taking away from the fact that natural pearls can be worth quite a lot of money. They are described as being rare jewels, which basically means you would determine their value based on things like shape, size, color, surface quality, luster, and orient. Most natural pearls are sold singularly to collectors, so you can imagine how much a string of matched natural pearls costs to buy. It's not uncommon for them to sell at auction for hundreds of thousands of dollars if the quality's right. In fact, in 1917, jeweler Pierre Cartier traded a matched double string of natural pearls he had in his collection for a Fifth Avenue mansion. Today, it's the New York Cartier store. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Tanzanite. If you wanted your engagement ring to stand out from all the others, then you might consider one of the rarest gemstones ever found. Tanzanite. It has one of the most unusual colors I've ever seen, which is a combination of purple, violet, and blue. If you've never seen this gemstone before, I'm not surprised. It's only found in one place on Earth that we know of, near Mount Kilimanjaro, and it's actually quite a recent discovery. It was first unearthed in 1967 by Maasai tribesman Ali Juyuatu, and Tiffany & Co. named it Tanzanite from Tiffany & Co. They named the zoocyte variety after where it was first found in Tanzania. To be more specific, its only source today is hills in Merilani in northern Tanzania. This gemstone is not only rare, but also highly desirable. Desirable. As it has so many different colors within it, it looks different with each angle. So the larger the stone in your jewelry, the more colors you get to experience. The most valuable tanzanite colors are blue-violet or deep saturated violet blue, and finer colors come from stones of at least 5 carats or more. You can purchase them in various shapes, but the most common cuts are oval and cushion. Number 18. Grand Didierite. The blue, green, and neon coloring of the rare Grandidiorite gemstone is enough to make you want one for yourself. This beautiful gemstone would look fantastic in any earrings, rings, and necklaces, but you'd be paying a hefty price for the privilege. People spent tens of thousands of dollars on this gemstone, and it's clear to see why. It was first discovered in southern Madagascar at the cliffs of Androhamana in 1902 by French mineralogist Alfred Lacroix. It was then named after the naturalist and French explorer Aldred Grandidier. Grandidierite is incredibly rare, but it's been found in a number of places around the world including the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Norway, Italy, Antarctica, and more. Most gemstones you find are opaque, but they have shades of soft neon blue, green, and blue. The coloring comes from iron impurities. Out of all Grandidiorite to be mined, only around 300 carats have been eye clean. That just goes to show how rare the finest quality stones are. The largest known Grandidiorite in the world is 78 carats, but even a 4.96 carat stone has a value of over $120,000. So could you imagine the price tag for 78 carats? Squillions of dollars, I bet. Number 17. Herkimer Diamond. Mineral collectors love rare diamonds, and you won't find too many who don't want to get their paws on Herkimer diamonds. This is the name given to doubly terminated quartz diamonds from Herkimer County, New York and its surrounding areas. 
Sometimes, the gemstones are referred to as Middleville Diamond or Little Falls Diamond. It's pretty typical to have the hexagonal form on one end of the quartz, but you'll see that this has it on both ends. This means that they haven't had much contact, if any, with the rock that hosted it while growing. They are definitely natural stones, but are among the rarest for this reason. They are also rare because they only grow in one place and really one rock. The host rock for Herkimer Diamonds is Little Falls Diamond stone from the Cambrian Age. It was deposited around half a billion years ago, and the Herkimer diamonds actually formed within the cavities of it. The cavities also have tarry hydrocarbon lining them, with druzy quartz crystals within. Herkimer diamonds do only grow in Herkimer County, but they are known by other names where they are grown elsewhere. You may also find such diamonds in Ukraine, Norway, Arizona, Afghanistan, and China. Number 16. Burma Ruby It's not an understatement to say that Burmese rubies are amongst the finest gems in the world. And did you know that it hasn't been until recent years that they've been allowed in the U.S. for a long time? The U.S. government was not happy with human rights violations and how they concealed the identity of the gemstone's origins to be able to export to the U.S. Sanctions have now been lifted. Many mineral collectors will be overjoyed with this news since rubies from Burma are truly quite remarkable. They have a slightly blue-red body color and high-intensity coloring with a red fluorescent emission. Tiny, silk-like and Inclusions also soften the look of the ruby, making it even more attractive. And many of us want what we can't have, which might drive the prices of these unique rubies up. Many of the alluvial deposits in the region of Mugak are mined out, and that's where many of the best gemstones come from. Now, miners have to explore hard rock, which produces lower yields with potentially more work. If you're worried about conflict when purchasing Burma rubies, some information might give you peace of mind. A report stated that most Mian Myanmar rubies are from conflict-free zones, with a reduced likelihood of the indirect funding of armed conflict. Number 15. Ammonite Ammonite is definitely one of those stranger stones, and I feel weird calling it a stone since my natural instinct is to call it a fossil. Ammonite is only found in the west of Canada near Drumheller in Alberta. The company responsible for finding a deposit on a farm in Alberta is named Amalite, so it's not that confusing at all. A long time ago, a significant sea incursion in central parts of North America resulted in elevation that caused the sea to be cut off from other water. It inched northward and started drying up as giant cephalopods, called ammonites, followed the source of the water before eventually dying. Effluvia, which is basically decaying matter, covered the remains, and they became petrified with aragonite, a naturally occurring crystal from calcium carbonate. So what we have today are basically pieces of shell from marine animals. If you wear ammonite earrings, for example, you're wearing a sea creature. Ammonite fossils are actually quite fragile, which means most pieces you see in jewelry have a hard mineral cap over the top for protection. One hard knock and the stone can be destroyed. That's why they are much better suited for earrings and necklaces than rings. Number 14. Kashmir Sapphire if you want your next piece of jewelry to be a one-of-a-kind piece, it would make sense to hunt down a Kashmir Sapphire. It's such a rare gemstone that it's hardly ever seen, and most people wouldn't have seen one in person before. The reason why they're so rare is that they're of superior quality. They have a gorgeous cornflower blue tint that some people describe as blue velvet. Sure, Burmese and Ceylonese sapphires are pretty desirable, but they just don't compare to this beauty. They come from a remote part of the Zanskar Range, which is in the Himalaya Mountains. Mines in the Zanskar Range are renowned for bright blue sapphires. When the Maharaja, or ruler of Kashmir, learned about the diamonds, he put guards outside the mines to protect them. Miners then worked day and night from 1882 till 1887, until there were no more Kashmir sapphires to mine in that area. In 1887, a geologist realized that the sapphire stones actually came from two separate locations, the old mine located within the pits of the valley and a second below the old mine on the valley floor. Today, it's extremely rare to discover a new Kashmir sapphire, and this undoubtedly adds to their value. Number 13. Volcanic Glass Obsidian 
When you hear of obsidian, you generally think of a black, glassy-looking rock. Gosh, I wonder who might have crafted that thought in our heads. Dumb. Okay, but that is not always the case. This guy had identified the stone within large rocks and started chiseling to bring it out. It actually looks like quite an effortless process, so the rock surrounding the obsidian or volcanic glass is obviously a lot softer than the obsidian itself. Once he pulls it out and shines a torch on it, it looks like an incredibly rare and valuable rock. It just might be if he sells it to the right people. Volcanic glass is formed when water meets hot magma. The magma cools quickly, so quickly, in fact, that the rock has no time to form any crystals. That's why it's such a transparent piece. The reason why it's not as dark as other obsidian you see is that it comes from felsic magma with a higher concentration of silica than dark obsidian, which comes from mafic magma. Mafic magma has a higher iron concentration. They actually get the names felsic and mafic from their contents. Fe is iron and Si is silica. Mafic contains Ma, which is manganese, and Fe, which is iron. So there you have it, folks. Number 12. Australian Opal Opals have been mined and adored for centuries, and they are no less valuable today than they were all those years ago. At least three different opals in Australia are produced, the Boulder Opal, Yoa Nuts, and Seam Opal. Boulder Opals consist of shells and sandy clay with opals in between. Yoa Nuts are walnut-sized concretions that have opals in the middle that don't reach the outer edge. Then there are Seam Opals that have varying thicknesses of white or black opal with an a sandstone matrix. These are sometimes referred to as sandstone opals, and it's very uncommon to find large opals of this type. So, given that you can find three different opal varieties in Australia, it's pretty evident that they are one of the best known opal producers in the world. Australian opals can also have wide ranging price tags. You might spend as little as 10 bucks per carat, but you can also be spending upwards of $6,000 per carat. This value may end up rising as the mines become more depleted. Fewer miners than ever before now work in opal fields because new discoveries are becoming rarer and rarer. Still, most people who own opals would say they're worth every penny. They're among the most colorful gemstones and supposedly bring happiness and love to those who wear them. Number 11. Oregon Sunstone if you're a big fan of the fall because of all the vibrant shades of gold and red, then you're just going to adore the Oregon Sunstone. Each time you look at it, you get to enjoy a different color, with shades ranging from dark red to orange to green to gold and more. It's the perfect fall gemstone. It's known as Oregon State Gem because it's found nowhere else in the world. This is because it has copper within it and no other gemstones like it do. Oregon Sunstone comes from southeastern Oregon, which which is often called the Oregon Outback. They were formed in molten lava and, with assistance from volcanoes, were discharged near the surface for easier mining. As lava wears away, gems make their way even closer to the surface. When you see one of these stones in person, you will truly have a hard time comparing it to any other. Deep greens, champagne yellows, vivid oranges, a little bit of yellow, green, red, Spectacular. Soft pinks and several variations all exist in a single stone. Sometimes you even see stripes in the stones, known as the Schiller effect. This is caused by light reflecting off the small copper platelets within. No two stones are alike, and they are never treated or dyed to enhance their natural beauty. Number 10. Paraiba Tourmalin. Many of the gemstones we know of today have been around for hundreds of years, but there's one you may not have heard of much, or even at all, and that's the Paraiba Tourmalin. This stunning stone was only discovered in the late 1980s, and it seems like miners haven't been able to keep up with demand. The neon blue coloring of the Paraiba Tourmalin, not to mention its electrifying allure, is what makes gemstone collectors turn up in their droves for just a mere speck of this stone. Demand was highest in Japan, but the US, Europe, and other parts of Asia weren't far behind. These unique stones are found in Nigeria, Mozambique, and Brazil, but the brilliant color saturation of those from Brazil makes them some of the most in-demand and most expensive. 
However, the original mine discovered in Brazil is now empty, and only small stones have been found in nearby gemstone mines. The scarcity makes them even more valuable, and you should be prepared to spend tens of thousands of dollars if you should ever want to get your hands on one. We're not even exaggerating. If you were to purchase a fine 10 karat Brazilian Paraíba tourmaline, you'd need to find $150,000 per carat. So if you're on a budget and like blue jewelry, you're probably better off with blue glass. Number 9. Alexandrite Natural alexandrite is incredibly rare, and its unique properties also make it desirable. As you can probably expect from the fundamental laws of economics for supply and demand, the price tag for getting your hands on these stones is pretty hefty. So what makes them so special? Well, they change color. Like the lyrics of Grace Kelly by Mika, they could be blue, they could be violet, they could be purple, they gotta be green. Okay, so those aren't the song lyrics, but you get my drift. A dark crimson color is noticeable when viewing at night, but it could also be light green in the daytime. They're pretty awesome stones. Alongside rarity affecting their value, so can size. Top quality gems can sell for up to $15,000 per carat, and over one carat, that price can be as much as $70,000 per carat. Alexandrite was first discovered in the 1830s in Russia's Ural Mountains. It was Nils Gustav Nordenskiold, a mineralogist, who realized the strange color-changing gemstone was actually something never seen before. Count Lev Alexeyevich Perovsky named the stone to honor who was supposed to be the future Russian Tsar, Alexander II. Then, in the 1950s, it entered the list of birthstones to be a more contemporary alternative to June's pearl. Number 8. Jadeite when you hear of jadeite, you probably think of jade, and yes, the two are related. Did you know that jade is actually made up of two minerals, jadeite and nephrite? Both have been used throughout history and in various cultures. It's a common material in Maori, Mesoamerican, and Chinese cultures. When Spaniards arrived in Mexico, it then became more valuable than gold, according to the Aztecs. Aside from its beauty, jade is also revered for its strength. An old gemological saying went like this. If you take a hammer and hit a diamond, the diamond will shatter into a dozen pieces. Hit a piece of quartz and it'll split in two. However, if you hit a piece of jade, it'll ring like a bell. And it's actually entirely accurate. Xylophones, gongs, and chimes have all been made out of jade, and the resulting sounds are beautiful. Chinese poets even compared the sounds from jade instruments to the voices of loved ones. But as jadeite is actually a mineral of of jade, it's worth a considerable amount more than jade, which is widely available. This dense material will set you back about three million dollars per carat. Number seven, the Pink Star Diamond. The Pink Star Diamond isn't one you can go into your local jewelry store to purchase. It's not a diamond type, but instead a single diamond, and a beautiful one at that. The Pink Star used to be known as the Steinmetz Pink and is a 59.60 carat diamond with fancy vivid pink coloring. De Beers mined it in South Africa in 1999 and, in rough form, it weighed 132.5 carats. It is the largest known diamond to have ever been rated vivid pink by the Gemological Institute of America. Because of its rarity, Steinmetz Diamonds spent 20 months cutting it. Finally, it was unveiled to the public around four years later in 2003. As you can imagine, it was quite a popular event. In 2013, the Pink Star was auctioned off by Sotheby's Geneva with a sales price of a little over 83 million bucks. That's a world record for any gemstone. Apparently, New York diamond cutter Isaac Wolf bought it and renamed it the Pink dream, but some sources say the price was never settled and it didn't end up selling. Four years later, in 2017, the Pink Star sold at auction again in Hong Kong to Chow Tai Fook Enterprises for $71.2 million. I'd pay a few bucks just to see it in person. Number 6. Muscrovite the muscrovite gemstone has a subtle beauty, and it's by no means a vibrant, standout gemstone. In saying that, it is incredibly beautiful in its own way. 
and also pretty rare. Muscovite are oxide minerals found in the Musgrave Ranges of South Australia. This gemstone type was discovered in 1967 and has a chemical formula of beryllium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. It's such a rare mineral that it can easily fetch about $35,000 per carat. So if you want an engagement ring with muscovite, you'd better start saving. It's gray to green, hard, transparent, and has a trigonal crystal system. And even though greeny grays aren't exactly desirable colors, there's actually something quite unique about this stone that would make you take a closer look. You can see vibrant colors in thin lines in a certain light, almost like they've been carved inside. These appear under direct sources of light and come from thin film iridescence within the crystallographically aligned and air-filled tubes. In 2021, the largest natural muscovite at 16 carats from Sri Lanka was for sale online at Gemrock Auctions. It was a treatment-free certified gemstone in the shape of a heart with purplish-gray coloring. And guess how much it cost? $800,000. For obvious reasons, the listing had 35 watchers but had been viewed over 14,000 times. Number 5. Podretite Podretite is an incredibly rare gemstone that was only discovered in the 1960s. The initial discovery of pudretite was as minute crystals in Mont Saint-Hilaire in Quebec, Canada. Its name comes from the Poudret family, since they were responsible for the opening of a mine in the Mont Saint-Hilaire area, where it was first discovered. Now, the quarry is owned by Salmon Mining Industries, which is a UK company. Since then, it's also been found in northern Myanmar and, more specifically, in the Mogok region of the Shan state. In 2000, an Italian dealer purchased an unfamiliar gemstone in Mogok, which was sent to the Gubalin Gem Lab for examination and was confirmed as the first documented gem quality specimen of Poudretite. Even if you don't really know the differences between gemstones, you'll most likely find this one easy to identify. It has a hexagonal crystal system and is colorless to light pink. It's also incredibly brittle with a white streak and glassy luster. Natural Poudretite isn't among the most expensive gemstones in the world, but it is by no means cheap. You can still spend upwards of $5,000 on under 2 carats and at least 100 bucks for 0.2 carats of an impure podretite. Number 4. Red Diamond if there's one diamond type you likely won't see in your mom's jewelry box, it's a red diamond. This diamond is considered the rarest and most expensive in the world, with six and seven figure price tags for almost all diamonds found. Red diamonds have the same properties as colorless diamonds except, well, the red. Very few red diamonds have ever been found, and this might be due to how experts believe their color is formed. The gemological community believes that colliding atoms in the diamond cause significant pressure, leading to the color. And they are so rare, you will rarely find them in large sizes. Instead, they tend to be less than a carat. Per carat, you might spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. The largest red diamond, and the most flawless, is called Musayef Red Diamond. It's 5.11 carats and has almost perfect clarity. It has an estimated value of $20 million and was purchased by an Israeli-born jewelry dealer in London called Shlomo Musayef from Musayef Jewelers Limited. Everyday people don't tend to own red diamonds. Instead, they are seen as an investment by diamond collectors or investors. Number 3. Hey Knight! If you have a spare 60,000 bucks stuffed onto your couch cushions, you may be able to purchase a single carat of painite. This stone may not look like much, but it is incredibly rare, and as a result, pretty expensive to buy. A sample of the mineral was first discovered in the early 1950s in Burma. For several years, only two crystals had ever been found, and these contained chromium, vanadium, and iron to create a browny, reddy, orangey stone that was quite autumnal in its coloring. So, for years and years and years, no one saw painite or even knew where to find it. 
However, that all changed in 2002. Thousands of crystals and fragments of it were found in northern Myanmar. You can still spend tens of thousands of dollars securing yourself carrots of painite, but you can also purchase tiny, poor quality stones for hundreds rather than thousands of dollars. And many people do, because this stone is quite important in pseudoscience and different cultures. Some people use it as a chakra opener to heal mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional pain. You can also purchase painite rings to clear the subliminal mind of unwanted thought patterns. As you can imagine, most stones within such jewelry aren't of gem quality, and this helps keep the prices affordable for the masses. Number 2. Blue Diamond it's easy to confuse blue diamonds with sapphires, but the two precious gemstones are very, very different. Blue diamonds range in color from light to deep blue, then with secondary colors like green, gray, and violet. They almost look like they've had a dye applied to them, but that's not the case at all. Blue diamonds are found in the earth with their natural, gorgeous blue coloring. They're actually only found in a few mines around the world, including the Argyle Mine in Australia, India's Golconda Mine, and the Kulinan Mine in South Africa. As you could probably guess, the intensity of the blue, along with the carat weight, contribute to how valuable and expensive blue diamonds are. For example, if you were to purchase a 2.35 carat blue cushion cut diamond, it might set you back upwards of $400,000. A 0.3 carat light blue diamond can be over $15,000, and deep blue diamonds could cost you almost $80,000 for just 0.25 carats. The more intense the blue, the more you can expect to pay. All blue diamonds are measured by intensity on a scale of fancy light to fancy and then to fancy intense. You would pay the most for a diamond called fancy intense. Number 1. Jeremejavite Jeremejavite is a mineral that not only has a complicated name, but also has a complicated makeup. It's a colorless mineral that can also be white, blue, light yellow brown, yellowish, and even aquamarine blue. So if you don't know your gemstones, you probably wouldn't be able to tell what you're looking at. Although it does have some distinct features that may give you a hint as to what you're looking at. It's hexagonal with elongated and tapered elements. It also boasts a vitreous luster and is of a reasonable hardness. Jeremejavite is quite a rare aluminum borate mineral. It was first discovered in Siberia in the Adun Chalan mountains of the Nerchinsk district in 1883. It was also found in the Pamir mountains of Tajikistan along with Germany's Eiffel district. Typically, jeremejavite occurs in granitic pegmatites with albite, tourmaline, quartz, and occasionally gypsum. If you're going to see any inclusions that might impact a stone's value, it's going to be fluid-filled fingerprints, growth lines, and even feathers. Because of these inclusions, you can't clean them in mechanical systems. If you do, you might just shatter your rare stone and ruin it for good. Instead, use a mild detergent with warm water and a soft bristled brush. Many things can make a gemstone rare, like its size, color, weight, or the fact that it's just rarely found or only discovered in one location. Some of these stones are definitely incredible. Have you seen any in person? Were they as beautiful as they seem? What would you include in a ring if money wasn't an object? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!